Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants video. So guys, today we're going to go over a couple of quotes from Joe Judge. He recently had another press conference, you know, I'm on Giants.com. I saw a couple people like um, John Schmelk, who I follow on Twitter because I know he's very much associated with the Giants as one of their like official reporters, so to speak. I'm not sure what his uh, actual title is. You know, he's tweeting out uh, quotes by Judge. And I was like, all right, let me check out Giants.com. And lo and behold, they kind of put together a lot of tweets from several people talking about quotes from Joe Judge's press conference that he had today is different from the one that the Giants YouTube channel uploaded about a week ago, like a 30 minute press conference. It's a different one. Once again, this one was held today. And I'm guessing they extracted the more important quotes or the more impactful quotes that Judge had in that press conference. And uh, I thought we should just take a look at it. Uh, you know, starting from today and, uh, you know, every Wednesday and Friday, I'm basically going to be, um, I got my, like, quote-unquote job back slightly. Uh, you know, I used to tutor kids, so Wednesdays and Fridays are going to be a lot busier than usual. So I was like, this is an easy enough video to record and edit, put together, put up on YouTube for you guys to check out that it won't take away too much time from, you know, the other stuff that I have to do during the day. And, you know, I would still have enough time to prepare for that and whatnot. So that being said, let us just hop right into it. So one of the first quotes that Judge had, or I should say one of the first quotes that popped up on the Giants article from Dan Salomon tweeting out that Coach Judge is on a video conference. He said Nick Gates, who just signed a contract extension, could factor into any of the five offensive line spots. He said the coaches need to do a good job of mapping out how they split his practice reps. Now, this is something that, you know, we basically talked about since Nick Gates signed his extension last week. Um, I briefly mentioned it in my video where I, I think I maybe had like a two or three minute segment uh, set aside for Nick Gates. You know, we talked about it on the square table with um, Kid Blue, OGR, and Tana. And this is something I agree with. I mean, we're not sure what Nick Gates is going to be yet. I think that he's going to be, in terms of his career, you know, career-wise, I think he's going to be a great depth offensive lineman you know a second string dude that's going to be not only a swing tackle but potentially a guard and center as well just literally somebody you could place anywhere on the offensive line but at the level you know level his performance is going to be a second string depth dude i think nick gates is going to be a great depth piece to have unfortunately with the situation at hand solder opting out and whatnot that kind of leaves the right tackle spot completely open and somebody like matt per for example is not ready to start in my opinion anytime soon in year one if he starts at all and i don't want him to start at all it would be towards the end of the season and cam fleming is kind of like an older version of nick gates adept swing tackle gates has maybe a little bit more versatility with playing at guard and center or you know they say he has the ability to do that uh this is something very true they're gonna have to see how they split his time because he's gonna spend a lot of time at right tackle this year just because of the fact that i don't expect cam fleming or matt pert to spend too much time there specifically in this 2020 season so it's going to be interesting to see how they split his time between right tackle tackle center and guard the next quote up is not exactly even a quote just you know some really short for um, again from dan song when he says joe judge on all outside linebacker marcus golden his reputation throughout the league is a very solid one now you know this is not exactly something much to go off of so i'm not going to spend too much time on it i mean you know i I, I agree with his quote. You know, I agree that Marcus Golden has a very solid reputation. The dude really has nothing bad that you can say against him. I mean, I, I dedicated a pretty big segment of my video yesterday to Marcus Golden. You know, him finally re-signing, you know, officially re-signing. And my thoughts on that, I love Marcus Golden as a player and whatnot. Glad to have him back. I'm sure judges as well. I think what they're worrying about right now in terms of Golden is catching him up to speed since he missed a lot of the spring, you know, video conference calls and whatnot. Next up, Judge, Joe Judge said even though they have a lot of players listed at the same position, such as linebacker, they all have a different set of skills. We're not limited in what we can do. Going back to Judge's, you know, opening press conference, the very first one he had, you know, when he was made the official Giants head coach, he says, don't tell me what you can't do, tell me what you can do. They're not going to force a square peg into a round hole. All of those, you know, any other related sayings and whatnot, speaking to versatility and fluidity, this screams true for the linebacking core, you know, and of course he's talking as a whole outside and middle linebacker. One player that comes immediately to mind for me is Lorenzo Carter, somebody that I made a video on earlier in the year saying that 
this is going to be a year he's going to break out if used correctly because Lorenzo Carter, as much as I want him to be a pure pass rusher, somebody that we can rely on to get us that 8 to 10 sacks a year, I think he's best going to be used all over the field because of his coverage ability. As an outside linebacker, he's not a middle linebacker. Maybe in a, a 4-3 scheme, he could be a middle linebacker. Maybe if we run some 4-3 sets with Patrick Graham's defense, he could be a middle linebacker. But as an outside linebacker, this guy has a lot of potential to drop back in coverage and whatnot, to even be in some fake blitz packages. And of course, he can get to the quarterback to a degree, as we saw with his rookie year and his sophomore year, a little bit of a slump. But this is very true. They're not limited in what they can do. And it's going to be interesting to see what he, do, what he does with guys like Zimenez, Carter. You talk about David Mayo, who was a surprise. He performed well. You know, let's not go and say that he's, you know, starter level quality. Of course, Ryan Conley, who has a good amount of coverage ability to him in that middle linebacker position. Blake Martinez, who I think as well will be performing a lot better than people expected because of how he was used in Green Bay. The linebacking core is definitely something to look forward to. And Judge definitely sees that. Another quote, he said, the emphasis right now in this phase of training camp is communication and identification of the schemes. And this is something I wholeheartedly agree with. The practices don't begin, well I know padded practices don't begin until August 17th. I still haven't seen, you know, like an official day for when non-padded practices begin even if they're gonna have non-padded practice. But this is something they have to get down no matter what. In fact, if I was them, I would dedicate almost all the training camp to getting identification and communication of schemes down because of the amount of time they have left to prepare you know we're talking just a little over a month maybe five weeks because our season the giant season begins on september 14 it's currently august 5th that's just you know a little over four weeks maybe five weeks left to prepare and the one thing i want them to get down is just the most fundamentals of fundamentals the absolute basics go out there and just know what you have to do within the scheme within certain play calls because that's what we didn't know last year that's the reason why the giants didn't didn't win as many games as they should have because game in game out offense and defense they look lost they didn't look like they had a set scheme and they were running the same plays over and over again on both sides of the ball these are two completely new schemes, you know, new coaching staffs and all that. I want them <laughs> to have at the very least that down. And with the time remaining, I really wouldn't expect them to have more than that down. I wouldn't expect the execution of said schemes to be perfect, but I would expect them to be in the right place, the right time to try and make plays for that scheme to be executed properly. Especially on the offensive side of the football, you talk about Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones. I think the offense is going to have an easier time. And I've said this a lot, you know, more than the defense just because of the talent we have on the offensive side of the football. Of course, it depends heavily on the offensive line. On the defensive side, it's going to be a bit more tough because Graham's defense in and of itself is complicated and God knows if they have enough time to, you know, fully learn that and, you know, learn the intricacies of it and whatnot. Uh, next quote here also from Dan Salomon. He's really been busy, man. He said, Joe Judd said the biggest thing for Daniel Jones right now is just being in the group and players hearing his voice and cadence on the field. I'm guessing the question he was asked was related to what is the biggest thing for Daniel Jones right now? Not sure if I would particularly agree with this. I think the biggest thing for Daniel Jones right now is spending as much time as he can with Jason Garrett and Jerry Shaplinski. A lot of people forget about Jerry Shaplinski, the quarterback coach we have on here. Somebody I'm excited to see what he does with Daniel Jones. Of course, Shaplinski, he's coached guys like Tom Brady. Um, not Tom Brady at the beginning of his career, mind you, you know, in the 2010s. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett as he was with uh, New England over there. And last year, he was with the Dolphins, I think. So he had... Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Josh Rosen, which are not exactly the best names to have on your resume, but nevertheless, I think the best thing for Danny Jones right now is to get as much time in as he can with the coaches. Going back to what I said before, get your fundamentals and basics down. That's what I want to see. One of the fundamentals and basics I want you to get down is pocket presence to help reduce the fumbling. So in my, my opinion, that is... I would take that over being in the group with the players hearing his voice and on the cadence and all that, which is certainly important. I don't think it's the most important, though. Next up, uh, Joe Judge, we're never going to cap ourselves on creativity. Not sure how to take this. I mean, very similar to one of the first quotes um, when they were talking about the linebackers and saying that they have a lot of guys at the same position that could do a lot of different things. I think these are basically the same quote. And for that, I'm just going to say, yeah, you know, fluidity, versatility. They're not going to force somebody to do something they can't. Um, maybe we're going to see a lot more of mixing of schemes than we expect this season, despite, you know, the drawbacks of the offseason. Who knows? Not really much to say on that quote, what I haven't already said before. 
Now is one from John Schmelk. He said, Joe Judge talks about how the most important thing to focus on is putting pressure on the quarterback. If sacks come, great, but the key to the opposing quarterback is to put the opposing quarterback under the rest to force them from mistakes. Obviously talking about the defensive side of the football here and I 100% agree, but I would be a little bit more aggressive and say sacks need to come because the Giants, they've been getting, you know, pressure, not a lot of pressure, but they have been getting pressure on the quarterback um, the more specifically last year. I was about to say the past two years, but they got a lot of pressure on the quarterback last year between Leonard Williams, Marcus Golden, and Dexter Lawrence. You need to get sacks now. Pressure when you're going up against a good quarterback doesn't phase them as much as you would like it to. You need to get that sack. You need to finish and get through the offensive line and actually rough up the quarterback. Because when a quarterback is good, potentially great, when they're a top 10 at that position, God forbid top five, pressure is not gonna do anything to them. They know how to play through that. I would just take it up a notch and be more aggressive, but it is certainly the most important thing on the defense, you know, this year coming through. And certainly why I'm really happy to have Marcus Golden back. You talk about him being the best pass rusher that we have on the team. You could take that as you wish, whether you see that as a good thing or a bad thing. Hopefully he's not the best by the end of the year. And what I mean by that is that hopefully somebody breaks out, whether it's Kyle, Kyler Fackrell, whether it's O'Shane Zimenez, whether it's Lorenzo Carter, hopefully there's somebody up there with Marcus Golden or even better by the end of the year. But what Judge is saying here is absolutely true. When, when you get them under stress and under duress, they're gonna make mistakes. I'm just gonna go back to saying, Pressure does not affect quarterbacks as much, you know, when you're going up against the top guys. And the Giants, with their schedule this year, we're going up against a lot of the top guys or what people would consider the top guys. Talk about Lamar Jackson, you know, Big Ben, uh, Jared Goff, who, you know, is definitely in the top half of the quarterbacks. And even them, those with good offensive lines like Dak Prescott. Pressure, it does not do anything to Dak Prescott when it comes with pressure from the Giants because he has a good offensive line and he knows he's going to stay safe. You need to actually finish through with it. Next quote, Joe Judge on signing kicker Chandler Catanzaro. He's got to compete for a job just like everybody else. As a former opponent, Judge notes Catanzaro has had a lot of good seasons, including ones at MetLife Stadium. That's great and all, but I think this is one of the quotes that Judge actually means through and through. We know he said this for everybody, but as Giants fans, I think we all know he didn't really mean it or, you know, in the back of his mind, he knows there's definitely guys that got their roster spots secured like Saquon and DJ, maybe even Slayton to an extent. Colin Zaro, I fully expect there to be an actual kicker competition. Fully expect them to sign some more kickers, whether it's another undrafted free agent, whether it's a veteran. You know, um, people have been saying Graham Gano since he was released from the Panthers. Who knows? But I think there's going to be a legitimate kicking competition. I don't expect uh, Colin Zaro to just walk in with basically no comp and get the job. So this is one quote I'll probably take at face value for sure. And one of the last quotes of the day, I think this is the second to last one, Joe Judge said his biggest message to everyone on the team has been about making the right decisions away from the building so they don't bring something into the building. Of course, referring to the health and safety of the players here. And I will say, I saw the Giants video. I can't put up any footage of it, for, you know, for fear of copyright and whatnot. But the Giants put up a video yesterday, an exclusive tour of MetLife Stadium and the Giants facilities, you know, in the COVID pandemic and they literally converted every single room they can in MetLife Stadium to a football related room. What I mean by that is like stuff that used to be clubhouses and whatnot for, you know, VIP sections, they've been converted into staff rooms. Uh, you know, daycares have been converted into staff rooms. Family rooms have been converted into locker rooms, weight rooms. Everything has been converted, you know, for the sake of space, so, you know, and spacing everybody out into some sort of football related room. So we know at MetLife, they're doing their job. It's on the players' heads now that they stay responsible off the field and outside the stadium. And one idea that's definitely interesting that Tana brought up is, you know, some sort of NFL bubble. If they can't do that, you know, at least at the very least, I think there should be, you know, stadium bubbles where every team does what the uh, NBA is doing right now. That is, they have their players stay within playing distance of, you know, the stadium. They have their players stay in hotels so they're not interacting with family or friends. It might seem a bit harsh, but it's really probably the safest way to go about it. Maybe they should entertain that to just eliminate, you know, as many variables as possible because we know they're doing their job at MetLife. And the last quote of the day that we're gonna take a look at, the video is actually going, you know, quite a good distance from what I expected. Judge on team morale, I see a lot of energy to come in and improve on a daily basis. I see that from our guys and that's all I could ask of them right now. I mean, I'm glad that everybody's coming in with energy and I, I'm really happy to hear that. You know, you saw it in the video yesterday, you saw it in Giants me social media posts on Twitter, you know, saying that the player's coming back. Everybody is just excited to be back on the field and I'm sure this is the, the same thing NFL wide. 
Everybody's just happy to be back to football. And that does a lot for team morale. They've been separated for so long. They're more motivated than ever to come out and show what they can prove. They're more motivated than ever to just come out and play the game of football, to be back with their brothers in arms. And you add that on top of the motivation of just being on the Giants team, a team that's been doubted throughout the offseason, a team that them know, you know, they know who their coach is, but the media has been bashing their coaches and their coaching staff. The media has been bashing their draft picks. You talk about guys like Daniel Jones and whatnot. This is just motivation upon motivation. And man, motivation can do some crazy thing. Maybe they come out and surprise us, but it's great to see that everybody's performing at high energy and they're just excited to be back with the game of football. Those are the quotes I want to talk to you all about today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, this is going to be a quick video for me to edit and upload so you guys can have something while I'm at work. <laughs> Put your comments down below and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.